Welcome to the studio. It's Froyle here. I'm so glad you've joined me. Today we're going to be working on a mixed media collage on canvas in a beautiful musical theme and I'm going to be giving you my secret tip of how to be a successful artist. So I hope you're going to join me. So I've been painting the expression of music for a very long time. It would have to be nearly 20 years. <laughs> That's a really long time. I've held beautiful exhibitions. I've experimented with a lot of mixed media and collage and applications of thick acrylic paint in the expression of sound. What I love about painting music is the movement and the concept of visually representing an audible expression. Music has always been a strong inspiration and influence in my work and that's why I love to paint it. I associate different colors with sounds. It's a personal preference. I don't have synthesia or, I, or that neurological condition that actually creates the color of the music like you know Kandinsky that'd be really cool <laughs> but I don't I just choose for me Nina Simone is a deep red violet the sound of a voice the depth and the tone it just has to be that color I also love to use the cellos the voluptuous shape the beautiful color it's a representation of humanity in my expression of creativity and in my art and since we're up to week 10 of our 100 days of collage and we're creating music, I thought I'd share my beautiful paintings with you. These are absolutely brand new, beautiful rice papers that I've created with Barb at Joggles and I'm absolutely loving them. Check it out. <laughs> Look at the texture. It's rice paper, baby. And it's made in Italy. It's got to be good, right? <laughs> So I've put a beautiful digital collage together of my paintings inspired by the music from the years of creating these collections and had them printed onto this fabulous rice paper. Of course, saturated colors, lots of textures and movement because that's just me. I've got these two beautiful ones. This one is Symphony. This one is Ancient Song, and these are in the glorious, the orange tones of the cello and a little bit of blue thrown in. And then we have some black and white. I love black and white. I love the contrast. And of course, we have some piano keys. Ah, oh, it's absolutely glorious creating with these different motives and textures. Of course, we could not go past red piano. <laughs> I'm telling you, Nina Simone is right in there and a beautiful soundscape in blue. I've had such a glorious time over the years creating these paintings, putting exhibitions together and pondering the expression of what a particular sound would look like. I've painted a lot of jazz music because I like the free flowing form and I find the movement to be very inspirational. So you'll see a lot of the scribbly notation in my paintings and on these papers because I'm trying to capture that essence of the sound and the expression of the music. These papers are an absolutely fabulous way to kickstart your creativity and get you moving in a direction. My passion here on this channel is to encourage you to create great art. And I know that these creative tools are really going to help you. So I'm going to use these two today. Did you have a guess that I would start with the brightest <laughs> and most saturated colors? And I'm going to use this canvas here. It's 30 centimeters or 12 inches square. I have a few in my studio. It's a lot smaller than last week's canvas, but I'm thinking it's going to work well. Now, what I want to inspire you with is to just start to find something that captures your imagination and attention and gets you moving and gets you creating because then you can develop your art and change it along the way. These papers are fabulous for that because they will create a fabulous background to kickstart your creativity. You can cover them with other materials 
and paints and textures and collage papers, and it will get you moving and get your creative juices flowing. You might end up covering the whole thing. That really doesn't matter. As long as it gets you going, then I've achieved the goal. So these are beautiful. They're going to work together. Now, when we look at these papers, there's a strong orange content and red. Of course, there is. They're my paintings. <laughs> and then there's like a less dominant color. Is this blue or turquoise? So I'm thinking we could add some more of the blue and turquoise because that would really enhance the colors and textures that are already in these images. Now, because they are the fabulous rice paper, they will mold well over the side of your canvas. And I'm definitely going to run some of this color right over the edge like that, because look how fabulous that's going to look. Now, I know that we can tear these papers like rice paper normally does, and you can dry tear it like this, or else you can actually get the water pen and do a soft tear. But I don't mind that because look at the beautiful fibers that are coming off that edge. That just looks glorious to me. Uh, but you can do a soft tear with one of these fabulous water pens from the dollar shop. You'll be able to do a soft tear by putting water along the edge of where you want the shape to be. Look at that, absolutely fabulous, beautiful, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and then it tears a lot softer. It's not so jagged, but you know, either way it's gonna work and it's going to look fabulous. So what are we going to put with these beautiful colors? I'm gonna have a rummage through my blue green box of scraps because I'm feeling like some more of this color would work really well. So I found some options in the beautiful blue. Look at this one, that is a glorious jelly print. That would work really well. This color would work. I think I've sprayed that with some inks so that might reconstitute. That happens sometimes with um, all of the inks I've tried recently do kind of bleed and reconstitute unless you spray them with like a matte varnish or something to seal them. But, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. <laughs> Another glorious jelly print, that's going to work. Oh, I found some rice paper that I've sprayed with some inks, so that could be cool. That would work really well with our other rice paper. A few more pieces, and yes, my canvas is full. <laughs> Maybe I should have pulled out another bigger one. Oh, man. Or else I'm just going to have to cut down my choices. Now, first of all, I think we need to cut the info off the bottom for sure, for sure. Joggles.com is where you'll find my glorious rice paper. And you can also have a look at my website. There's more info on there. Yay, cut that bit off the bottom first. Now what are we going to do? Well, we definitely want some of this because that's just beautiful. That one or that one? Mm, I don't know, man. It's a toss-up. I think I'll go with that one. And this paper is on, maybe it's on tissue. I'm really not sure. Feels like it could be. So we could wrap some of that around the side. Now, I also want to wrap some of this one around the side because I just love seeing that when you're walking up to the painting and you see the beautiful color on the side, it's just really exciting and it's really interesting, especially when the color follows through to the front. So I'm going to wrap that around that side, I'm thinking. You just wrap it like a parcel. It's really, really easy and it's just really effective. We don't want this edge here, so let's tear off the sharp edge from there. And we don't really want it to be super straight either, so let's get rid of that. Now you want to keep that bit because that's going to be a nice little piece somewhere else. Righto, so that's going to go like that. I'm going to put this beautiful colour. Oh man, I'm loving this colour. That is glorious. That's going to go around like that. This one we could put, hmm, can we put the cello upside down? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. Let's put this one down the bottom. And again, let's wrap that around the edge like that. 
That's going to work. We want some of this one. Yeah, this is going to be just fine. We might also put some of this around this side so it balances that color over there. But I would like to add a little bit, hmm, maybe some of the green rice paper in the middle here. And maybe I could put some of that around it. I'm not really sure. I think we'll just start. We'll get some of these papers down. And then we think about what we might like to add on top of it. Because to me, the best collage is multiple layers. So we want to add some more textures and some more layers to it. Maybe we'll pull out some music pages or maybe we might add some notes or perhaps a little gold pigment. That'd be really nice. Okay, let's get the papers down first and then we'll see what we want to add to it. Rice paper's gone down beautiful, very easy to work with, loving the colours, and it doesn't bleed. <laughs> this one's letting off a little bit of ink as I'm putting my copious amounts of matte medium down. Of course, if you don't use matte medium, then you're probably going to not have so much trouble with bleeding. Now, I don't think I want to have this entire piece going over the side because I really love this little cello down there and I'm going to want to have it more seen on the front. I'm going to wrap some of it around the side and then I'll find some other pieces to add to the sides to finish them off. That'll work. Now, these beautiful printed rice papers from Joggles are archival and they are fade resistant. Good to know, right? <laughs> I don't want to be creating these magnificent paintings and then having it fade. Oh, man, that would be just disastrous. Right, so mm, what about some of this one? I do really like the cello in it. And it's got a little piece, tiniest little piece up in the top corner of some blue. So I'm thinking this is going to work, but I don't want it to be too stiff. So we might tear it like that's so easy to tear. I love the fibers. I think that's what I love the best about rice paper is the incredible fibers and the tactile texture of it. Just beautiful. Now, I did want some more of that blue on this side, didn't I? So I think I'll put that down next. So let's add some of this glorious blue around on this side. I think that would just look fabulous. Right, so I'm loving my beautiful rice paper this side and this side because it's been glued straight on the canvas. But this piece here was glued on the green piece and the blue piece and those colours, those dyes and sprays are soaking into the rice paper and they're discolouring my beautiful piece. So that's not making me happy. <laughs> I'm not happy with that plan, but it's good to know, right? So if you're going to use the fabulous rice paper, glue it down on your surface rather than put it over something that's going to suck up all the colour. Maybe if it was paint and not the dye sprays, that would be okay. But at the moment, those dye sprays are soaking into my beautiful rice paper and I'm not happy about that. So we have to fix this whole section here because that's not working. I'm going to have to do something a little drastic. It may or may not work. So hang in there with me to the end because <laughs> we're both going to see if this is actually going to turn out. 
I've pulled out this jelly print. Yes, I know. This is going to be a little bit of a drastic idea, but it's on thick black cardstock, so nothing's going to soak through that. And I have an idea of how we can fix it, but we just have to create a few more layers and get a little experimental in the process. But that's okay, right? Because you're here for a lesson on how to create mixed media and this is how it goes. Sometimes your brilliant ideas don't always work and you have to pivot or change them or find solutions on how to fix things. Yeah, this is gonna work. Um, along the way, you just have to take each step, work it out. If it doesn't work, you just take another step in another direction. And that is the creative process. And the more you relax and get used to that part of the process, the better your creativity is going to be. In the beginning, when I was, oh, I'm going to fix it. In the beginning, when I was first creating art, and this kind of thing happened. I thought I was completely useless. I'd cry and throw myself on the ground. I'm serious. I'm not making this up. This is what it is. I've been painting for 30 years now. <laughs> this is what used to happen in the beginning. I'd get halfway through something. I'd hate it. Or something like this would happen and I would consider myself a complete failure, throw myself on the ground, have a hissy fit, and a cry and almost give up, but you just can't because this is truly the creative process. It doesn't always work out first time. It, nothing always goes exactly how you want it to or your hope, or there's just a glitch. There's some kind of technical issue <laughs> or the mediums aren't working or the paper wrinkles or the paint bleeds through or something happens along the way and you have to pivot. You have to think about how you can fix it, but you have to know that you're not useless if that happens. It doesn't matter. It has no reflection on you as an artist or a creative person. This is part of the process for everybody. And if no one else is telling you that, they're just lying to you. <laughs> because you just can't get away with creating beautiful artworks without something going wrong or going amiss or turning upside down, and that's just part of the process and the journey. And it really is a journey. There is no cheat streets to the destination. You have to go through the process, take the steps, work it out. Now I know that that's going to be a problem. Next time I won't do that, right? And now I'm gonna save you from doing that. <laughs> These rice papers are beautiful. They're so good to work with, but don't put them over sprayed papers or from inks that are going to bleed through. Yay! Now we know that. Right. How are we going to fix that? Oh, just you wait and see. <laughs> I might even add another print. This is a jelly print with copper and some mark making. I think it's just on mm, copy paper. Pretty easy. I was experimenting with some ideas, throwing some paint around, having a bit of a printing session. And that's the thing, right? If you've got like a hundred jelly prints, then you can just have a rummage and find something else that might work. The bonus of jelly printing is you always end up with so many beautiful prints. Right, so I'm going to put another piece here because I'm just not happy with that green. Mm, but I don't want to cover that one. Okay, so... Why don't we go that way? I like the blue. Right, we'll cut it down a bit this side. That could work. And we're just going to keep trying ideas until it does work. Loving the copper colour, that's going to work. Righto, righto. Let's put that there. And didn't I mention that I really like collage with lots of layers? <laughs> I do. I really do. Actually, this copper colour is really nice because it's working with my oranges. That's going to be a really nice base. 
and I think I might put some of my rice paper back on top. But do we want any other textured paper while we're at it? Because you know, we could. Maybe we could add some textured paper. What about we lighten the palette by bringing in some beautiful gold, like this fabulous textured paper. That is just beautiful. Yes, I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm gonna put it across here. How far up do I wanna go? Maybe there. I'm gonna put it across here and then wrap that beautiful color around the side and then that will just lighten things up a little and it will look beautiful and it will add to my glorious warm tones and that just makes me happy. So that looks very glamorous there. I'm going to put some more on, perhaps over this side. Yes, maybe, baby, up to there, like that, and then over the edge. Okay, I like that plan. What do you think? Should we put one more little piece up there? Well, I've got a hole. <laughs> there is a gap, so we could put a little piece up here. <laughs> it's just such beautiful paper. The gold's really nice. I've got this piece, or... This piece might be better because it's not so big, perhaps. Right, that gold is looking beautiful. I love that shape and the pop of metallic. Yes, it makes me feel better. So do you want to know my secret for being a successful artist? Just don't give up. I'm telling, I'm telling you. And collage covers a multitude of sins. So if you don't like something, you can change it. You can add something over it. We could add paint to this. We could cover it in different colors or papers or textures. There's always something you can do to fix an area of your collage that you're not happy with. Just don't give up, try something else. Now, I'm thinking I want another cello here. I've got one there and one there. And yes, I do want another one probably in the middle there somewhere somehow i would like another one of my beautiful chillus i like the way it's connecting all of these shapes that looks pretty cool why do i like the cello so much well the sound is quite haunting don't you think it's just absolutely beautiful the instrument itself is glorious the color is glorious the shape is very voluptuous. I've always really loved the cello. So let's put it there on the edge of those shapes. That's going to work. Now, what are we going to put there? That's the next question. I could add some of this section that's left. You know, I actually could because it would bring that color up to the other side and that could work really well. But if I want to tuck it under the first Piece, I'm going to have to be a little quick. <laughs> that's the benefit of matte medium. If you're using matte medium, um, the downside is it does reconstitute the inks. Hello. <laughs> but the upside is it stays wet for a while and you can still move pieces. So if I put this beautiful piece here, oh, I'm liking the blue on there, then I want to tuck it under the first piece that I just put down and that should still be wet enough to move. That is the benefit of using the matte medium. So see how easy that is to pick up and move? <laughs> I do really like that bit of the copper poking through there. So I'm going to push this down a little further. So it leaves me some of that copper coming through the top. I really like that piece. It looks pretty cool. Uh, the blue on this is really nice too. So let's perhaps do it like that. And then that copper's coming through. Okay, let's try this idea. Put that one down and then we can put this one back over the top. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Look at that just beautiful right so when i was rummaging through my blues and green 
drawer, I came across this really weird paper. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's paper or fabric, but it's really fibrous. It's kind of bizarre. And I think the turquoise would work. What do you think? I like the fibers of it. It's just really weird. I think it's weird. And I've got no idea where I've got it from because it's been in my drawers for years. Like years and years. <laughs> so I'm going to use it up because the colors are going to match. It's a really nice turquoise color. The fiber kind of looks fun. So we might just put it on here. Let's tip it over to the side. Have it running over the edge. It will take a fair bit of matte medium to get it down because it's so fibrous. It might even need a bit of a haircut. Man, that stuff's crazy. I, just can't, I can't tell you where I got it from, but it's been in my drawer for years, so we need to use it. Yeah, I like that. That's working. Righto. We have to have more, but we can't just have one bit there. Let's add, maybe we could add a bit here. Like that. That's going to work. Love those fibers. Color looks good. Do we need three sections? <laughs> you know that we do. What about there? Maybe. Baby. Yeah, I think I like it there. Okay. Righto. Well, we might have to wait till this dries to actually see how we're looking before we think about do we want to add anything else to it? Any more layers or any more textures? It's looking pretty good. I'm really loving the colors. Love the music theme. Oh my gosh, I love the music theme. And my new beautiful rice papers work really well. Look at them. They're drying up fabulous. They took all that matte medium. Don't put them on anything that's going to bleed through because you wreck your colors. But other than that, <laughs> we're all good. Right, it's looking beautiful. No, it's not dry. <laughs> because, because, you know, I can't wait for it to dry. I think I'd like to add some more of the white. I like the white popping through there. And I think we could do that with some of the scribbly uh, notation that I love to put into my paintings, which you can see through all of the rice paper pieces, that scribbly kind of note texture. It's a whole lot of fun. Now, I'm using this paint here. It's a Jacquard Neoplark in white. I think you can get this on Amazon. I'll have a look and see if I can find the link. I know you can get it at Warehouse Stationery if you're in beautiful New Zealand. Now, why I want to use this particular paint is because it's kind of really strange in that it's very stringy. See how stringy that is? It just seems to come out that way and it works really well for this kind of notation. Now, if you can't get this paint, you can create the same texture with string gel or tar gel. And I've shown you how to do that in previous episodes. I'll put a link um, on the video. I was doing uh, some beautiful circles with the tar gel and with the string gel and it works really, really well. So it's the same kind of consistency. So you can use either of those products if you can't get this paint. I'm just using this paint because it comes straight out of the pot like that. And it's easier than mixing up the tar gel. But, you know, they work just as well. Now, you might want to have a little practice on some paper packaging before you throw it all over your painting. <laughs> Because I know how that can go, baby. I mean, we can fix it, right? It just takes a bit of time. So a little practice on some paper packaging before you throw it on your painting is always a good idea. And I want to add some of that beautiful texture. Now, of course, I can fix anything. That's what I've always told the people that come to my workshops. And it's true, but... Um, fixing stuff like this can take a bit of time, so you want to try and get it right <laughs> when you first do it. Slow and steady wins the race. It doesn't matter if it goes a little wobbly because we're creating musical notation and it's 
they're that expression of the sound and the music and the abstract expressionistic application of it. So it's allowed to be a little wobbly. In fact, it looks way better if it's wobbly. And let's take it right off the painting. That's looking pretty beautiful. You might want to pop any air bubbles. I can see one forming just there. This paint also dries very glossy, which I love. And putting it on top of that textured paper, oh, I'm telling you, the contrast of the texture with the gloss looks amazing. So I'm loving that the white's coming through. We've got a beautiful note there. I'm thinking we should bring some from maybe down here and across and up there. That could work really well. Righto, let's do that. It just creates that beautiful music feel. The notation's always... give us that beautiful sense of the movement of the music. Maybe just a little few more bars there. And of course, perhaps a little bit there. <laughs> that looks fabulous. I'm loving it. Oops, I did get a bit carried away with this one, not to worry. It's all abstract art anyway. Right, so I'm gonna leave that to dry and then I'll give you a close up. I'm pretty happy with it. The rice paper is absolutely beautiful. It works really well. If it kickstarts your creativity and gets you moving and you get some on the paper or your art journal or your crafting projects or on canvas like this, then I will be successful because encouraging you in your creativity is what I'm really passionate about. Looking good, we'll let it dry and then we'll see how it comes up. So what do you think about my beautiful mixed media collage painting? I'm absolutely loving it. It's drying up really well. The rice papers are absolutely fabulous. They glue down really well and they handle all of my loving, which is really important. <laughs> So have a look at the rice papers. You'll find the link in the description under the video. And I know that you'll just love working with them. They're a beautiful texture. I'll probably wait a couple more days for this to dry. And then I think I'll give it a high gloss varnish. I'm pretty sure that will make it look spectacular. Thanks for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you were encouraged to know that everybody <laughs> has a little oopsie sometimes. You just have to pick yourself up, push on, try again, and don't give up. You will get there. You will succeed, baby. It's mileage under the brush. It's just practice, perseverance, and you will be a successful artist if you just don't give up. You can find the links to my beautiful brand new rice papers from Joggles in the description under the video. Also, I'm going to leave you with the playlist for 100 days of collage in case you've missed any of the episodes. So come and join me again next time in the studio.